Hi, I'm Tommy Master from data36.com and in this video I will show you how to work with Python variables, different Python data types and basic operators. These will serve as an important foundation for using Python for data science, so let's get started. Oh, and just a quick comment, if you want to check out the whole Python for data science series in video or article format, go check out the links below this video. Okay, so I have opened the Jupyter Notebook. I've already shown you in a previous video how to install and open Jupyter Notebook on your computer. If you don't know how to do that, start with that tutorial. I have added the link for that too below this video, but I have already opened my Jupyter Notebook. So let's start with Python variables. In Python, we like to assign values to variables. Why? Because it makes our code better, more flexible, reusable, and understandable. At the same time, one of the trickiest things in coding is exactly this assignment concept. When we refer to something that refers to something that refers to something, well, understanding that needs some brain capacity. But don't you worry, you will get used to it and you will love it. Let's say we have a dog, Freddy, and we would like to store some of his attributes, name, age, is it vaccinated, the year of born, and so on. So we would like to store this about Freddy the dog in Python variables. For that, we will type these into a Jupyter Notebook cell. First thing first, dog underscore name is Freddy between apostrophes, then age is nine, is underscore vaccinated, is true, height 1.1, and birth year is 2001. I've done the whole thing in one cell. We could have done this in separate cells if we wanted to, but for now, let's hit shift plus enter. And from now on, if we type these variables, the assigned values will be returned. Um, for instance, for dog name, it returns Freddy. Oops, I mistyped this Freddy. I rerun this cell. Okay, so this is the new variable. Dog name is Freddy. Age is nine, of course, and so on. We assigned different values to these variables and we can refer to them from this point on. And just like in SQL, in Python, we have different data types. For instance, the dog name variable holds a string. Oh boy, it's mistyped again. Let's rerun this. Okay, so the dog name variable holds a string and in Python, a string is a sequence of Unicode characters, for instance, numbers, letters, punctuation, and so on. So it can have numbers or exclamation marks or almost anything. Um, for instance, R2D2 would be a valid string as well. This is a string. And in Python, it's super easy to identify a string as it's usually between quotation marks or apostrophes. I will change this back to Freddy. Shift enter, shift enter, and the dog name is Freddy. Now, the age and the birth year variables store integers. This is an integer, birth year, this is an integer as well. And integer is a numeric Python data type. Another numeric data type is float. In our example, it's height. which is 1.1, and the is vaccinated variable, which is true, is a so-called Boolean value. Booleans can be only true or false. So again, dog name, Freddy is a string, age nine is integer, is vaccinated is true, which is a Boolean, height is 1.1, which is a float, and birth year, is 2001, which is an other integer. And there are many more data types, but as a start, knowing these four will good enough and the rest will come along the way. And it's also important to know that in Python, every variable is overwritable. So for instance, if we run, let's do this in a new cell, 
if we run dog underscore name is addy, this will overwrite our variable. So now our dog name is addy. Now, of course, this variable can be overwritten again with the original cell. So if I run this again, the first cell, then dog name will be Freddy again. And it's important to see that the assigned value, so this time Freddy, is not in the order of the cells. So it's not at this time, but in the order of how I run the cells. And as you can see, this cell was run as the 15th cell and this cell was run as the 17th. So this value has been overwritten here and thus the dog name is Freddy. If I rerun this cell, now this is the 17th, this is the 20th, and if I run it now, it's at the again. Point is, you can overwrite Python variables. Let's talk about Python operators, and for that I will scroll down and add a few new cells. Great, and I will define two new variables, A and B, a is 3, B is 4. So again, A and B are two variables, this time they are two integers. So what can we do with A and B? Well, first of all, a bunch of basic arithmetic operations. It's nothing special. You could have found out this by common sense, but just in case, let me do this for you. You can do A plus B, which is 7. You can do A minus B which of course is minus 1, a multiply b, a divided by b, and here are two special ones, b percentage a means that we divide b by a and python will return the remainder, so in this case it's 1, but just for the sake of demonstration let me overwrite our variables and let's say a is 5, B is 7, and in this case the remainder would be 2, of course. Then if it's 13, then it's 3, if it's 15, then it's 0, and so on. So this returns the remainder. And the other one, the other special or more special arithmetic operation is A asterisk asterisk B, which means that we raise a to the power of b, in this case it will be a very big number, maybe it was way too big. Okay, I honestly don't know what caused the error here, maybe I, uh, I don't know, whatever, um, just in case, yeah, it's not too big. So, the point is that with this expression, we can raise a to the power of b, which is really useful in data science, of course. And at this point, I recommend that you play around with these arithmetic operators, you define your a and b variables. It's good practicing and it's fun, but I want to show you one more thing here, which is, and I will add a few more cells for that. So I will show you compersion operators which again is pretty useful in data science and the results of compression operators will always be boolean values. So if you can recall it, a boolean value can be true or false. I will get back to that soon, but let's work with our A and B variables again. A is 3, B is 4, let's define them again. And let's check out a few basic compersion operators. For instance, let's ask Python whether a is greater than b, and the answer is false, because a is 3, b is 4, so a is actually less than b. So as you can see, if you type this, a is greater than b, it's basically a question that Python will answer, and in this case the answer is false. Of course, if we type the opposite, b is greater than a, it's a question whether it's true or false, and Python will answer it's true. One of the most common compersion operator in Python is this, 
a equals equals b, which asks Python whether a equals b, and the answer is of course false. And it's really important to see the difference between these two expressions. So one equals sign means that we will assign a value to a variable. Two equals sign will mean that we ask Python whether two values are equal. For instance, a typical beginner mistake is that they do something like this when they want to compare A to B, but this in fact assigns A to B. So in this case, A will be 4, B will be 4, while we want it to compare whether A, which is 3, to B, which is 4, are equal to each other or not. Anyways, you get the point. I will remove this and this. And these are the basic comparison operators. Uh, let's reassign A3B4. And so this will be false, of course. And one last thing that I want to show you is the concept of logical operators, because we can do that. Um, and I will show you this with to new variables c which is true and d which is false. So these are boolean values, right? It can be either true or false. And this can be tricky for first, but this will be super important, especially when we will work with if statements and different other more complex concepts. Point is, we can do something like this, c and d. So the logic is this. If you use the AND logical operator, you will get a Boolean value, and the result of this Boolean value is true only if both C and D are true. I can actually show this to you. So in this case, this would be true. But since one of these was false, it will be false. If C is false and D is false, this will be false. So the AND logical operator basically asks Python, in this case, of course, whether C or D are both true. Of course, we have C or D as well, which asks Python whether either C or D is true. So this will be true if either C or D or both of them are true. So this is true, but if C was false, then of course this would be false. If both would be true, then of course this would be true. But in this case, it's true. And the third logical operator that you will use a lot is not C, which is pretty easy. So this will be the opposite of C, which is false. And here's a quick table that will help you to understand the difference between AND and OR. And I know some of you will find this easy, some of you will find this hard, and maybe this is less exciting, but again, this will be the foundation of many things in the future, for loops, if statements, even more complex functions, and eventually data science concepts as well. So I really, really recommend that you start to type this into your Jupyter notebook, you start to run your comments, and start to combine things that you have seen in this video, and as you change things and combine things, it's gonna be much more fun. Speaking of which, if you want to test yourself and spice things up with some exercises, check out the article version of this video, where I have added two exercises that can help you to test yourself. And this was it for today. In the next video of this Python for Data Science series, I will introduce the most important data structures in Python. But with that being said, this is the end of this video. If you liked it, please leave a like or a comment. And if you want to learn more about data science and how to become a data scientist, take my 50 minute video course, how to become a data scientist. It's free and linked in the description. Also check out my six week online course, the junior data scientist first month video course, which is a super practical, hands-on and fun way to learn data science and more particularly what data science looks like in real life. It's a six-week simulation of being a junior data scientist at a true-to-life startup. So the course is called the Junior Data Scientist First Month, and I linked that in the description as well. 
Anyways, thanks for watching. I'm Tommy Meister from data36.com. Until next time.